and in honor of the stuff that made my head want to explode this week, it's time to get real. Get real. All right, so I had mentioned in that episode about the man who came up with the rice formula saying, don't use ice anymore. Okay? Oh, yeah. This is him. Dr. Merkin. Now, the fact that his last name is the same as a toupee for a woman's crotch is besides the point. That's what it's called? A Merkin. Yeah. It's not spelled the same wow. way, but I'm, lear but I'm learning called. a lot today. And I hope all of you out there learn something today. And that's one to grow on. And I'll be right back with one to grow on. <laughs> Cheech and Chong and American. Uh, I like to leave some things open for Tom. The surprise. I enjoy it. So, Dr. Merkin. Let me find. He was the one. So, right here. 1978, I coined the term rice. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. For the treatment of athletic injuries. Ice has been a standard treatment for injuries and sore muscles because it helps to relieve pain caused by in injured tissues. Which I said, I think I said it in that podcast, that ice helps you up here. Which is pain. It makes you feel better. Coaches have used my rice guideline for decades. But now it appears that both ice and complete rest may dele delay healing instead of helping. I scream this to people all the time, constantly. Stop listening to that crap and listen to your body and let your body do what it's supposed to do. In a recent study, athletes were told to exercise so intensely that they developed severe muscle damage that caused extensive muscle soreness. Although cooling delayed swelling, it did not hasten recovery from this muscle damage. A summary of 22 articles found almost no evidence that ice and compression hastened healing over the use of compression alone. Although ice plus exercise may marginally help to heal ankle sprains. So in the use of ankle sprains, it may help marginally. Yeah. So what does marginally mean? Okay, you really don't have Bare, to. Barely. Right. So here we go. What does it say right there, dude? Please read it. Can you read it? I can't. My eyes don't see that far. Yeah, let me I can make it a little bigger. <laughs> Look at that. How's that? Healing requires inflammation. Well, that if it's if it's inflamed, that means there's blood flow to it. Right. So let's see what he says. When damaged tissue, when you damage tissue through trauma or develop muscle soreness by exercising very intensely, you heal by using your immunity, the same biological mechanisms that you use to kill germs. This is called inflammation. When germs get into your body, your immunity sends cells and proteins into the affected area to kill the germs. When muscle and other tissues are damaged, your immunity sends the same inflammatory cells to the damaged tissue to promote healing. The response to both infection and tissue damage is the same. Inflammatory cells rush to injured tissues to start the healing process. The inflammatory cells are called microphages. Release a hormone called insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1, into the damaged tissue, which helps muscles and other injured parts to heal. However, applying ice to reduce swelling actually delays healing by preventing the body from releasing IGF-1. There you go, dude. Again, I tell people this all the time. Let's go down here. What's that say? Ice keeps healing cells from enter entering injured tissue. Applying ice to injured tissue causes blood vessels near the injury to constrict and shut off blood flow that brings in the healing cells of inflammation. The blood vessels do not open again for many hours after the ice was applied. 
the decreased blood flow causes the tissue to die from decreased blood flow and can cause even permanent nerve damage. Ouch. Ice also reduces strength, speed, endurance, and coordination. Okay, now this is where a lot of people use ice as well. Ice is often used as a short-term treatment to help injured athletes get back into a game. The cooling may help to decrease the, decrease the pain, but it interferes with the athlete's strength, speed, endurance, and coordination. In this, in this review, oh, wow, yeah. a medical literature found 35 studies of the effects of cooling. Most of the studies used cooling for more than 20 minutes, and most reported that immediately after cooling, there was a decrease in strength, speed, power, and agility-based running. Dude, now, when do more, most people use cooling? They use it wrong a lot of times. They use it before they work out or in between and then go back to working out. You're screwing yourself. If anything, you should be using it at the end of the workout, if anything. That's different. I mean, is this not crazy, dude? Is this not insane? This stuff. Well, it makes sense because there's actually been scientific studies as well that most anesthesiologists say um, keeping the body uh, at, you know, war keeping the body warm during surgery promotes healing and faster recovery from surgery. So a lot of times in the OR, um, they all demand what we call a bear hugger, which is a blanket warmer that blows warm air on their bodies because if they get cold and they drop below temperature, it actually, it lessens, uh, healing time. It, it, I mean, it increases healing time and, um, causes a lot more chance for infection even. So, right. which makes sense because like the same exact concept applies if there's less blood flow due to reduced body temperature than the, you know, the macrophages as well as, you know, the uh, white blood cells that are, you know, attacking anything that may be infection or, you know, it just causes the whole process to slow down rather than take its natural course. Perfectly said, dude. Perfectly said. 